Okay, if you guys remember Lab 5, there were very, very few calculations, next to none. Um, the primary thing to take away from Lab 5 would be know how to separate simple water-soluble and water-insoluble compounds. So, for example, if we had a big mixture of salt and dirt, and we wanted to separate the salt out, well, one of the things that we could do is, is uh, run it through a filter to separate out all the dirt and let the sand wash through with the salt, which is soluble in water, so it would dissolve or it would pass right through the filter. Okay, so that's pretty much all you really need to know. Maybe know a few of these terms like precipitation, coagulation, so on and so forth. Um, but that brings us to lab six, which is a pretty big lab. Uh, it's to do with the calorimeters. Even though you know we only got to do coffee cup calorimeters, the concepts were still there and very important. So, for calorimetry, for calorimetry, you need to understand what the calorimeter constant is used for. So, the calorimeter constant is essentially there to under help you understand how much heat you are losing from your calorimeter. Um, in addition, you need to really understand what all of these variables mean. Uh, for example, Q, we need to know that stands for the amount of heat that was lost in our uh, reaction or gained in our reaction. Um, can be lost or gained. Uh, M would be the mass of your liquid. For example, if we were using water, we could use we would use uh, the mass of the water. Cp sometimes is denoted as S, is essentially our uh, specific heat constant. And that is going to tell us how much energy one degree change of this liquid or solid uh, holds in terms of energy. And finally we have dt or delta t which is our change in temperature. So you need to be able to know and, and uh, list all of those terms. Um, you also need to know how to do a basic calculation. So in this, what the example I'm going to do here is we are going to do 38.2 grams of water at 60 degrees is added to a calorimeter with 52.3 grams of water at 21.5 degrees C and the final temperature is given. So what is the calorimeter constant? So let's go ahead and solve this problem. So I'm going to start off by doing a balance on all of the energy. So we know that the, um, that the, and I'm going to color it in red for the energy from the hot water. And we know that if we add that to the energy of the cold water that was given off or absorbed, um, plus the energy that was lost from our calorimeter has to be equal to zero. So let's break that down a little bit more. If we go back to our equation, we remember that Q equals MCP delta T. So we are going to replace each one of these Qs with MCP delta T. Um, so let's go ahead and do that. So we've got the mass of our hot uh, water, in this case, the specific heat of our hot water, and the change in temperature of our hot water. We are then going to add some cold water. So that is going to be the mass of the cold water, the specific heat of the cold water, and the change in temperature of the cold water. And remember, one of those is going to be positive and one of those is going to be negative because our net energy is going to be zero. Um, we're also going to have lost some energy from our calorimeter and for that, we're just going to use the C of the calorimeter times the delta T. Um, so let's go ahead and solve this problem. Now, obviously, the, delta, the, the change in temperature um, for the calorimeter is just going to be from our final temperature to our whatever it was holding initially. So if the calorimeter had the cold water, that's what we would start off with. Okay, so let's now go ahead and replace all of these values. So if we go back to here, we've got, for our mass, we've got 38.2 grams. And now, uh, if you leave it, um, if you don't convert to SI units, I think that should be okay as long as you do that across the board. 
So let's go. Let's do that. Um, we will have then 38 grams of our hot water. And I'll, I'm not going to put in the units, even though I would highly recommend using units at all times, um, just because I'm a little short on space. And now, so the delta T is going to be the change in temperature of the hot water. So we always do final minus initial. So final temperature was 37.2 degrees. Initial temperature was 60. Um, we are then going to add our cold water. So our cold water is going to have a mass of 52 grams, according to our problem, 52.3 grams. And we are going to use the same specific heat constant, the 4.18. And what was our final temperature? Our final temperature was the 37.5, or 37.2, sorry. And we are then going to subtract the 21.5. Now, finally, we're going to have to add our calorimeter constant. So we're going to get plus the C of our calorimeter. And we're going to then multiply that by our final temperature of our calorimeter minus our initial temperature. And all of this equals zero. So we're going to get, if we multiply all these numbers out, we will get negative because 37 is less than 60. So we'll get a negative number, negative 3,641 plus our cold, which will be 3,432. And we are then going to add our loss from our calorimeter. And that will be 15.7 times our calorimeter constant of C, Cal. And all of this will be equal to 0. So then we can just simply add these two numbers together and solve for our C, Cal. So if we add these two numbers together, we will get a um, negative 209 plus 15.7 times the calorimeter constant equals zero. So we go ahead and set them on opposite sides. So we just, we just add 209 to both sides. And we have 209 equals 15.7 Oops, that's not supposed to be a period there. 15.7 times the C of the calorimeter, and we divide both sides by 15.7, and then that will equal our 13.3 joules per degree Celsius if you carried all your units through. And that is our calorimeter constant. Okay, so moving on to our next lab.